Packaging and Labeling, Wikipedia Article Audio Packaging is the science, art, and technology of enclosing or protecting products for distribution, storage, sale, and use. Packaging also refers to the process of designing, evaluating, and producing packages. Packaging can be described as a coordinated system of preparing goods for transport, warehousing, logistics, sale, and end use. Packaging contains, protects, preserves, transports, informs, and sells. In many countries it is fully integrated into government, business, institutional, industrial, and personal use. History Ancient Era Modern Era Tinning Canning Paper-based packaging 20th Century the Purposes of Packaging and Package Labels Packaging Types Symbols Used on Packages and Labels Shipping Container Labeling Package Development Considerations Environmental Considerations Packaging Machines Books, General References Package labeling or labeling is any written, electronic, or graphic communication on the package or on a separate but associated label. The first packages used the natural materials available at the time, baskets of reeds, wineskins, wooden boxes, pottery vases, ceramic amphorae, wooden barrels, woven bags, etc. Processed materials were used to form packages as they were developed, for example, early glass and bronze vessels. The study of old packages is an important aspect of archaeology. The earliest recorded use of paper for packaging dates back to 1035, when a Persian traveler visiting markets in Cairo noted that vegetables, spices, and hardware were wrapped in paper for the customers after they were sold. The use of tin plate for packaging dates back to the 18th century. The manufacture of tin plate was long a monopoly of Bohemia. In 1667 Andrew Yaranton, an English engineer, and Ambrose Crowley brought the method to England where it was improved by iron masters including Philip Foley. By 1697, John Hanbury had a rolling mill at Pontypool for making Pontypool plates. The method pioneered there of rolling iron plates by means of cylinders enabled more uniform black plates to be produced than was possible with the former practice of hammering. Tin plate boxes first began to be sold from ports in the Bristol Channel in 1725. The tin plate was shipped from Newport, Monmouthshire. By 1805, 80,000 boxes were made and 50,000 exported. Tobacconists in London began packaging snuff in metal-plated canisters from the 1760s onwards. With the discovery of the importance of airtight containers for food preservation by French inventor Nicolas Appert, the tin canning process was patented by British merchant Peter Durand in 1810. After receiving the patent, Durand did not himself follow up with canning food. He sold his patent in 1812 to two other Englishmen, Brian Donkin and John Hall who refined the process and product and set up the world's first commercial canning factory on Southwark Park Road, London. By 1813, they were producing the first canned goods for the Royal Navy. The progressive improvement in canning stimulated the 1855 invention of the can opener. Robert Yates, a cutlery and surgical instrument maker of Trafalgar Place West, Hackney Road, 
Middlesex, UK, devised a claw-ended can opener with a hand-operated tool that haggled its way around the top of metal cans. In 1858, another lever-type opener of a more complex shape was patented in the United States by Ezra Warner of Waterbury, Connecticut. Set-up boxes were first used in the 16th century and modern folding cartons date back to 1839. The first corrugated box was produced commercially in 1817 in England. Corrugated paper received a British patent in 1856 and was used as a liner for tall hats. Scottish-born Robert Gare invented the pre-cut paperboard box in 1890 flat pieces manufactured in bulk that folded into boxes. Gare's invention came about as a result of an accident, as a Brooklyn printer and paper bag maker during the 1870s. He was once printing an order of seed bags, and the metal ruler, normally used to crease bags, shifted in position and cut them. Gare discovered that by cutting and creasing in one operation he could make prefabricated paperboard boxes. Commercial paper bags were first manufactured in Bristol, England, in 1844 and the American Francis Wall patented a machine for automated bag-making in 1852. Packaging advancements in the early 20th century included Bakelite closures on bottles, transparent cellophane overwraps and panels on cartons. These innovations increased processing efficiency and improved food safety. As additional materials such as aluminum and several types of plastic were developed, they were incorporated into packages to improve performance and functionality. In 1952, Michigan State University became the first university in the world to offer a degree in packaging engineering. In-plant recycling has long been common for producing packaging materials. Post-consumer recycling of aluminum and paper-based products has been economical for many years, since the 1980s, post-consumer recycling has increased due to curbside recycling, consumer awareness, and regulatory pressure. Many prominent innovations in the packaging industry were developed first for military use. Some military supplies are packaged in the same commercial packaging used for general industry. Other military packaging must transport materiel, supplies, foods, etc. under severe distribution and storage conditions. Packaging problems encountered in World War II led to military standard or mill spec regulations being applied to packaging which was then designated military specification packaging. As a prominent concept in the military, mil-spec packaging officially came into being around 1941, due to operations in Iceland experiencing critical losses, ultimately attributed to bad packaging. In most cases, mil-spec packaging solutions are similar to commercial-grade packaging materials, but subject to more stringent performance and quality requirements. As of 2003, the packaging sector accounted for about 2% of the gross national product in developed countries. About half of this market was related to food packaging. Packaging and package labeling have several objectives. Packaging may be of several different types. For example, a transport package or distribution package can be the shipping container used to ship, store, and handle the product or inner packages. Some identify a consumer package as one which is directed toward a consumer or household. Custom packaging is an evolutionary use of modern materials. Thermoforming and vacuum forming allow for expanded capabilities for large trays, displays, and specialty needs. 
Thermoforming is a method which uses vacuum, heat, and pressure to form the desired material into a shape determined by its mold. This type of packaging is often used by the cosmetic and medical industry. Packaging may be described in relation to the type of product being packaged, medical device packaging, bulk chemical packaging, over-the-counter drug packaging, retail food packaging, military materiel packaging, pharmaceutical packaging, etc. It is sometimes convenient to categorize packages by layer or function, primary, secondary, etc. These broad categories can be somewhat arbitrary. For example, depending on the use, a shrink wrap can be primary packaging when applied directly to the product, secondary packaging when used to combine smaller packages, or tertiary packaging when used to facilitate some types of distribution, such as to affix a number of cartons on a pallet. Many types of symbols for package labeling are nationally and internationally standardized. For consumer packaging, symbols exist for product certifications, trademarks, proof of purchase, etc. Some requirements and symbols exist to communicate aspects of consumer rights and safety, for example the CE marking or the estimated sign that notes conformance to EU weights and measures accuracy regulations. Examples of environmental and recycling symbols include the recycling symbol, the recycling code, and the green dot. Food packaging may show food contact material symbols. In the European Union, Products of animal origin which are intended to be consumed by humans have to carry standard, oval-shaped EC identification and health marks for food safety and quality insurance reasons. Barcodes, universal product codes, and RFID labels are common to allow automated information management in logistics and retailing. Country of origin labeling is often used. Some products might use QR codes or similar matrix barcodes. Packaging may have visible registration marks and other printing calibration and troubleshooting cues. Technologies related to shipping containers are identification codes, barcodes, and electronic data interchange. These three core technologies serve to enable the business functions in the process of shipping containers throughout the distribution channel. Each has an essential function, identification codes either relate product information or serve as keys to other data, bar codes allow for the automated input of identification codes and other data, and EDI moves data between trading partners within the distribution channel. Elements of these core technologies include UPC and in item identification codes, the SCC-14, the SSCC-18, interleaved 2 of 5 and ucc slash in 128 barcode symbologies, and ANSI ASC X12 and UN slash Edifact EDI standards. Small parcel carriers often have their own formats. For example, United Parcel Service has a maxi code 2D code for parcel tracking. RFID labels for shipping containers are also increasingly used. A Walmart division, Sam's Club, has also moved in this direction and is putting pressure on its suppliers to comply. Shipments of hazardous materials or dangerous goods have special information and symbols as required by UN, country, and specific carrier requirements. On transport packages, standardized symbols are also used to communicate handling needs. Some are defined in the ASDM D5445 standard practice for pictorial markings for handling of goods and ISO 780 pictorial marking for handling of goods. Flammable liquid Explosives 
physical protection the objects enclosed in the package may require protection from, among other things, mechanical shock, vibration, electrostatic discharge, compression, temperature, etc., barrier protection a barrier to oxygen, water vapor, dust, etc., is often required. Permeation is a critical factor in design. Some packages contain desiccants or oxygen absorbers to help extend shelf life. Modified atmospheres or controlled atmospheres are also maintained in some food packages. Keeping the contents clean, fresh, sterile, and safe for the duration of the intended shelf life is a primary function. A barrier is also implemented in cases where segregation of two materials prior to end use is required, as in the case of special paints, glues, medical fluids, etc. At the consumer end, the packaging barrier is broken or measured amounts of material are removed for mixing and subsequent end use. Containment or agglomeration small objects are typically grouped together in one package for reasons of storage and selling efficiency. For example, a single box of 1,000 pencils requires less physical handling than 1,000 single pencils. Liquids, powders, and granular materials need containment, information transmission packages and labels communicate how to use transport, recycle, or dispose of the package or product. With pharmaceuticals, food, medical, and chemical products, some types of information are required by government legislation. Some packages and labels also are used for track and trace purposes. Most items include their serial and lot numbers on the packaging, and in the case of food products, medicine, and some chemicals the packaging often contains an expiry slash best before date, usually in a shorthand form. Packages may indicate their construction material with a symbol, marketing packaging and labels can be used by marketers to encourage potential buyers to purchase a product. Package graphic design and physical design have been important and constantly evolving phenomena for several decades. Marketing communications and graphic design are applied to the surface of the package and often to the point of sale display. Most packaging is designed to reflect the brand's message and identity. Primary packaging is the material that first envelopes the product and holds it. This usually is the smallest unit of distribution or use and is the package which is in direct contact with the contents, secondary packaging is outside the primary packaging, and may be used to prevent pilferage or to group primary packages together, tertiary or transit packaging is used for bulk handling, warehouse storage and transport shipping. The most common form is a palletized unit load that packs tightly into containers. Prevention Waste prevention is a primary goal. Packaging should be used only where needed. Proper packaging can also help prevent waste. Packaging plays an important part in preventing loss or damage to the packaged product. Usually, the energy content and material usage of the product being packaged are much greater than that of the package. A vital function of the package is to protect the product for its intended use, if the product is damaged or degraded, its entire energy and material content may be lost, minimization the mass and volume of packaging can be measured and used as criteria for minimizing the package in the design process. Usually reduced packaging also helps minimize costs. Packaging engineers continue to work toward reduced packaging, reuse reusable packaging is encouraged. Returnable packaging has long been useful for closed loop logistics systems. Inspection, cleaning, repair and recuperage are often needed. Some manufacturers reuse the packaging of the incoming parts for a product, 
either as packaging for the outgoing product or as part of the product itself. Recycling Recycling is the reprocessing of materials into new products. Emphasis is focused on recycling the largest primary components of a package, steel, aluminum, papers, plastics, etc. Small components can be chosen which are not difficult to separate and do not contaminate recycling operations. Packages can sometimes be designed to separate components to better facilitate recycling, energy recovery waste to energy and refuse derived fuel in approved facilities make use of the heat available from incinerating the packaging components, disposal incineration, and placement in a sanitary landfill are undertaken for some materials. Certain U.S. states regulate packages for toxic contents, which have the potential to contaminate emissions and ash from incineration and leachate from landfill. Packages should not be littered. Accumulating and collating machines, blister packs, skin packs, and vacuum packaging machines bottle caps equipment, overcapping, lidding, closing, seaming and sealing machines, box, case and tray forming, packing, unpacking, closing and sealing machines, cartoning machines, cleaning, sterilizing, cooling and drying machines, coating, printing, marking, stamping and imprinting machines, converting machines, conveyor belts, accumulating and related machines, feeding, orienting, placing, and related machines, filling machines, handling dry, powdered, solid, liquid, gas, or viscous products, inspecting, visual, sound, metal detecting, etc., label dispenser, orienting, unscrambling machines, package filling and closing machines, palletizing, depalletizing, unit load assembly, product identification, labeling, marking, etc., sealing machines, heat sealer, slitting machines, weighing machines, check wear, multi-head wear, wrapping machines, stretch wrapping, shrink wrap, Banding, form, fill and seal. Machines. Other specialty machinery, slitters, perforating, laser cutters, parts attachment, etc. This way up. Fragile material. Keep away from water. Package design and development are often thought of as an integral part of the new product development process. Alternatively, development of a package can be a separate process, but must be linked closely with the product to be packaged. Package design starts with the identification of all the requirements, structural design, marketing, shelf life, quality assurance, logistics legal, regulatory, graphic design, end use, environmental, etc. The design criteria, performance, completion time targets, resources and cost constraints need to be established and agreed upon. Package design processes often employ rapid prototyping, computer-aided design, computer-aided manufacturing and document automation. An example of how package design is affected by other factors is its relationship to logistics. When the distribution system includes individual shipments by a small parcel carrier, the sorting, handling, and mixed stacking make severe demands on the strength and protective ability of the transport package. If the logistics system consists of uniform palletized unit loads, the structural design of the package can be designed to meet those specific needs, such as vertical stacking for a longer time frame. A package designed for one mode of shipment may not be suited to another. With some types of products, 
the design process involves detailed regulatory requirements for the packaging. For example, any package components that may contact foods are designated food contact materials. Toxicologists and food scientists need to verify that such packaging materials are allowed by applicable regulations. Packaging engineers need to verify that the completed package will keep the product safe for its intended shelf life with normal usage. Packaging processes, labeling, distribution, and sale need to be validated to assure that they comply with regulations that have the well-being of the consumer in mind. Sometimes the objectives of package development seem contradictory. For example, regulations for an over-the-counter drug might require the package to be tamper-evident and child-resistant, these intentionally make the package difficult to open. The intended consumer, however, might be handicapped or elderly and unable to readily open the package. Meeting all goals is a challenge. Package design may take place within a company or with various degrees of external packaging engineering, independent contractors, consultants, vendor evaluations, independent laboratories, contract packagers, total outsourcing, etc. Some sort of formal project planning and project management methodology is required for all but the simplest package design and development programs. An effective quality management system and verification and validation protocols are mandatory for some types of packaging and recommended for all. Package development involves considerations of sustainability, environmental responsibility, and applicable environmental and recycling regulations. It may involve a life cycle assessment which considers the material and energy inputs and outputs to the package, the packaged product, the packaging process, the logistics system, waste management, etc. It is necessary to know the relevant regulatory requirements for point of manufacture, sale, and use. The traditional three R's of reduce, reuse, and recycle are part of a waste hierarchy which may be considered in product and package development. Development of sustainable packaging is an area of considerable interest to standards organizations, governments, consumers, packagers, and retailers. Choosing packaging machinery includes an assessment of technical capabilities, labor requirements, worker safety, maintainability, serviceability, reliability, ability to integrate into the packaging line, capital cost, floor space, flexibility, energy requirements, quality of outgoing packages, qualifications, throughput, efficiency, productivity, ergonomics, return on investment, etc. Packaging machinery can be Efforts at packaging line automation increasingly use programmable logic controllers and robotics. Packaging machines may be of the following general types. Bakery goods shrink-wrapped by shrink film, heat sealer, and heat tunnel on roller conveyor. High-speed conveyor with stationary barcode scanner for sorting. Label printer applicator applying a label to adjacent panels of a corrugated box. Robots used to palletize bread. Automatic stretch wrapping machine. Equipment used for making molded pulp components and molding packaging from straw. A semi-automatic rotary arm stretch wrapper. Equipment for thermoforming packages at NASA. Automated labeling line for wine bottles. Shrink film wrap being applied on pet bottles. Pharmaceutical packaging line. Filling machinery for bag in box.